Hi, I'm Kate. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to sew, darn and break in your point shoes. So if you're new to point work, this is going to be a great video for you. Of course, there are many other ways to prepare a pair of point shoes. So if you're interested in seeing some of the other ways, check out my video, the seven most common ways to prepare point shoes and what they all do. So here I have a pair of Freed of London point shoes, which are handmade. And because they're handmade, I'm going to try them on beforehand to see which shoe I prefer as left or right, because handmade shoes do vary slightly. I'm then going to break in the shoe by bending the sole backwards and forwards to loosen it up. I'm then going to soften the vamp by bending the wing back and forwards with my thumb and fingers. You don't want the vamp too rigid, otherwise it might create blisters and be quite difficult to do a demi point. So shaking out any excess bits of dried glue. I'm then going to take my left shoe to start with and I'm going to take my ribbons which I've cut into four equal parts. Next, you'll want to put your shoe back on so that you can place the ribbon in the middle of your arch. You might want to put a mark on the shoe where you've placed the ribbon and don't forget to leave one or two centimetres of the edge of the ribbon so you've got enough space to sew. Another way of doing this is to fold the back of the shoe over and then sew your ribbons in the corners. So once you've placed your ribbon on, you're going to sew across the top then down the side, along the bottom, and then back up the side again. So you're sewing in the shape of a rectangle. If you're not familiar with sewing, I would recommend this stitch. Starting off the stitch, you're just going to thread the needle through, and then just before you pull to the end of the knot, you're going to loop the needle through the end and then pull tightly. This is to give you a nice secure beginning. Then you're going to press the needle back down where it started and push the needle a bit further out. So you're going further than where it came out the last time. It's then going to go back over the top and press through where the last stitch ended. So you're sort of weaving back over on yourself each time. However, you can also just do a normal tacking stitch, which I'm going to show you now going down the side. So a tacking stitch, you're just pressing the needle in, threading it back out again and moving down slightly and repeating. So there's no going back over the stitch. This is a less secure stitch, but it is also a lot easier. So I'm just going to do my rectangle, like I said, and then finish off by tying a knot. You'll then repeat the same on the other side, and then everything on the other shoe. Next, we're going to add the elastic to the back of the shoe. So you're going to fold over the back of the shoe, place your elastic about one or two centimetres away from the seam, leaving about, again, one or two centimetres of the end of the elastic. And then we're going to do our same stitch in a rectangle going down, across, up and across. The elastic on the heel of the shoe is there to prevent the back of the shoe from sliding off. So once you've sewn one end of the elastic, you're going to put the shoe on, wrap the elastic around your ankle and then flex and point your foot to check where the end of the elastic should be sewn. And then repeat the same stitch on that end. So now you've finished one shoe, don't forget to do the other. Next, we'll look at how to darn your shoes. So you'll want to use very thick thread or wool and then you're going to wrap the end of your wool or your thread around the platform of the shoe twice. You can also use the end of your elastic from the drawstring and this will give a thicker, firmer platform. 
I'm going to demonstrate just using the thread. So to start off the darning, you're going to thread the needle through and then leaving just enough thread so that you can wrap it around the platform twice. Just check that. If you've got enough, you're good to go. So you'll then hold down the ends of the thread, keep it in place. And then with your needle, you're going to stitch underneath the ends pull and then you'll find yourself with a loop. You're then going to thread the needle through this loop so that you're catching the ends of the thread that you're holding down. Then pull tight. If you want to see this from a different angle, I've got my loop and I'm pulling the thread and I'm catching the ends of the thread that I'm holding down. You're just going to repeat this now, going around the edge of your platform. Some dancers like to do a full circle. Other dancers like to do more of a three quarter circle, leaving the bottom of the shoe free. And then other dancers like to completely fill the platform of the shoe. I'm just going to show you a full circle around the platform. So repeating this stitch, you're going to go all the way around once and then go over the circle once again, but this time with a different stitch. We're going to use the tacking stitch that I showed you before. So you're just passing the needle underneath, pulling it out, moving across and repeating. This is just going to thicken the stitch so you've got a much stronger platform. And you're going to do this all the way around in a complete circle again. Then just cutting off the ends so they're nice and neat. You've now darned one shoe. Now you just need to repeat it all on the other shoe. A good way of checking to see if you've darned the shoes correctly is to place them upright onto the platform and see if they can balance by themselves. Thanks for watching. If you found that useful, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to check out some of my other videos on pre-point work, beginner point work and preparing your shoes.